Hey there, Lick and Riffers, and welcome back to yet another awesome electric guitar soloing lesson here on Lick and Riff, in which you're gonna learn a true secret weapon that is used by all the advanced players that you know. But you probably never heard of this idea because it's so simple, it's embarrassing. It's used to spice up any solo and add instant angular motion to it. Okay, it creates a really sophisticated and outsidey sound, and yet once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's a really, really simple trick. Okay, but it creates such amazing music and it just enhances any solo. I'm talking about this sound. Okay. This was blues in A, but there were many angles going on. Okay, it didn't sound like a pentatonic scale, but it was, it was the pentatonic scale, okay? The, the blues pentatonic scale. Okay? But it didn't sound like it. I'm gonna play it slowly and then I'm gonna reveal the secret and uh, you'll see how beautifully this works no matter where you play it. Okay? I'm gonna play the exact same lick slowly. Did you catch it? Did you catch what was going on? The diminished arpeggio. The diminished arpeggio was going on. And I added it in two different positions. Okay, I added it on the first string position and I added it on the second string position. And um, depending on where you start the arpeggio, you're gonna get completely different results. So let's talk about the arpeggio. When we're playing the pentatonic scale, okay, we're on A. We have eight and five on the first ring. We have that three fret distance. Okay, so we have eight and five. So play that on the third string as well. and you're starting to get that angle. But there's one note missing, okay? So I want you to play the exact same thing, one fret down on the second and fourth strings. So if we were playing eight and five on strings one and three, I want you to play seven and four on strings two and four. Okay, this is the basis for this sound. Okay, this is the whole secret. Now, I wasn't playing the whole thing. I wasn't playing that last note. In fact, I wasn't playing the fourth string at all when I was playing the arpeggio. I was playing five and eight on strings one and three, and I was connecting them by using seven on the second string. That's the shape, that's the arpeggio that we're using. Okay. And while this is a diminished arpeggio, this is still within the A blues framework. Okay? Because you're using the flat five on the third string and you're using the Dorian note on the second string. So you're still within the blues framework. Now this is where it, get, it gets interesting because the second example that, uh, the second half of the lick, used the same shape, but on different string sets. So I was playing five and seven on the D string, and then I slid into seven on the D string, and I started the arpeggio there. And this gives me another set of sounds. Okay, but we're still within the A 
blues framework. And this works no matter where you play it because the diminished uh, chord, the diminished harmony, the diminished scale is basically um, a refresher when it comes to music. Okay? Whenever a musician doesn't know uh, what to add to a composition, they just throw in a diminished chord. Okay? You can throw in a diminished or a half diminished chord anywhere as a connector between, especially as a chromatic connector, by the way. But um, I'm straying off topic. The beautiful thing about this concept, okay, let me play the leg that I played again. Okay, can you see it now? Now, the beautiful thing about the whole diminished framework is that it is symmetrical. It repeats itself every three frets. Okay, every tone and a half. Now, that means that you can take this arpeggio and actually slide it three frets up, three frets down, and it's going to retain the affinity of the original pentatonic scale that you're, um, that you're adding it to. Okay? So, let's say you're in the first position. Second position. You see, that was the fifth position. Okay, let's connect it to the fourth. Okay, something like that. Now, without a backing track, it's it might be a little bit difficult to hear that if you're new to the concept. But um, trust me when I tell you, everyone is using this. This is a highly kept secret okay, in the soloing community just because it's so simple that it's actually embarrassing because it's basically one shape that you move, uh, that you move anywhere you want okay? as long as you keep that three fret rule. Now, having said that, if you want to really get sophisticated, you can actually move it outside that three fret framework. So if we're on A and we want to play the diminished arpeggio shape on the dominant chord, okay, on E7, then we're going to need to take this diminished shape from 5 down one fret to 4 because this is where the... E7 D shape is, okay? And we slide back down to five to finish on A. Okay, let me use the chords. Did you get it? Could you wrap your ears around that? Um, if you want to play it over the dominant chord, you just slide it down one fret. And then the same uh, three fret rule applies. Okay? You can move it if you want, but it's one fret down. If you want an altered sound, yeah, if you want an altered sound, and uh, if you don't know what altered means, altered just means uh, playing notes that are completely outside of the scale. It's a jazz concept. Okay? The, the dog decided that altered wasn't for her. Okay? She doesn't like jazz. Um, so if you want uh, to play over an altered chord like E sharp 9 or E flat 9, then the... First of all, the half step down would work, but you can also use a half step up. You can play the diminished arpeggio on six, and then you get something like this. Hey, something like this. 
Um, I was trying to come up with a palatable example, but altered is a difficult concept in and of itself. So we'll leave it at that. Um, so there you go. Um, the pro soloist's true secret weapon for angular momentum. Right. So um, I will see you in the next lesson. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Bye for now. Have fun.